In this video, we're going to study solutions to the wave equation on the real line, and we're going to see our solutions in terms of what are called traveling waves. So the wave equation on the real line is a partial differential equation. It says the second derivative of our, of our function with respect to time is a constant, which I'm calling v squared, times the second derivative of the function with respect to x. And the meaning of this quantity v is it tells us how fast waves travel on the line. You see, if you take f of xt to be any function of x minus vt, then the derivative with respect to x is just h prime of x minus vt. And the second derivative with respect to x is just the second derivative of h with respect to uh, second derivative of h1 evaluated x at x minus vt. On the other hand, by the chain rule, if you take a derivative with respect to time, it gives us h pri h1 prime of x minus vt times the derivative of what's inside, so you pick up a factor of minus v. Second derivative, you pick, a factor, pick up a factor of minus v twice. That gives you a v squared. So no matter what function you started with, the second derivative with respect to time is v squared times the second derivative with respect to space. So any function at all, any function of x minus vt will give you a solution to the wave equation. This is called a forward traveling wave. So for example, if we took our function h1 of s to be e to the minus s squared. So h1 of x minus vt is e to the minus x minus vt squared. Now this is a bell-shaped expression. At t equals 0, it looks like this. And at t equals 1, you have e to the minus x minus t, uh, x minus v squared. And that's peaked when x minus v, or in general, x minus vt, is equal to 0. In other words, it's peaked when x equals vt. So at t equals 1, you get the, the, this curve, which is just shifted a distance by v to the right. At t equals 2, it's shifted by 2v. At t equals 10, it's shifted by 10v. So this is an example of a forward traveling wave. It keeps its shape. Okay, I can't draw, so this doesn't look exactly like this. But it's supposed to look just the same. It keeps its shape, and all it does is it moves to the right. That's a traveling wave. Now you can also have backwards traveling waves. If you have a function of h plus vt, then whatever it is at time 0, time t later it's going to be minus v away from there. Time 10, t, 10 seconds later it's going to be minus 10v. So if you have a function of x plus vt, it moves to the left. If you have a function of x minus vt, it moves to the right. Now, a theorem says, which we're not going to prove, by the way, the theorem says that every solution to the wave equation is can be written as a forward traveling wave plus a backward traveling wave. Now, it's pretty easy to check that anything of this sort solves the wave equation. After all, this solved the wave equation, and this solved the wave equation, and if you add two solutions to the wave equation, you get another solution to the wave equation. But in fact, this gives us all of the solutions to the wave equation. And in fact, if I give you the initial conditions, you can figure out what h1 and h2 are. The only ambiguity is a constant. If you add a constant to h1 and subtract it from h2, you get the same answer. So here's how. You look at the initial condition. The initial condition consists of what is f at time 0. And if you plug in t equals 0 to this expression, you just get h1 of x plus h2 of x. And then you look at the time derivative at time 0, and it gives you minus vh1 prime of x plus vh2 prime of x, because the derivative of this is h1 prime times minus v, and the derivative of this is h2 prime times plus v. Okay, now if you take this equation, g naught is minus vh1 prime plus vh2 prime and integrate it, you get that the integral of g naught divided by v is minus h1 plus h2. So now we've got h1 plus h2 is f naught, h2 minus h1 is the integral of g naught divided by v. By adding these two equations and dividing by 2, or by subtracting these two equations and dividing by 2, 
we can figure out what H1 is and what H2 is. There you go. H1 is the initial position minus 1 over V times the integral of the initial velocity divided by 2. H2 is half of the initial position plus 1 over V times the integral of the initial velocity. And I said that there was an ambiguity about a constant. That's the constant of integration. Whenever you integrate g naught of x dx, you have to find an antiderivative. Add a constant to it, and you get a different solution. If you add a constant to the integral, you'll add to h2 and subtract from h1. OK, so those are traveling waves. So for example, let's suppose we, we had a, a wave that at time 0 looked like e to the minus x squared, and its time derivative was 0. Then, by our formulas, which I'll bring back into this, the game, f naught is 0, sorry, g naught is 0, so h1 is half of f naught, h2 is half of f naught, so h1 and h2 are each 1 half e to the minus x squared. So our general solution for all time is 1 half e to the minus x minus vt squared plus 1 half e to the minus x plus vt squared. So at time 0, we had this bell-shaped curve, e to the minus x squared. And a little later, we have these two bell-shaped curves, one centered at v and going to the right, and one centered at minus v and going to the left. And at time 2, they've moved farther out, and they're just going to keep running away from each other forever. And that's the solution to the wave equation with this initial condition. OK. That's what happens if you're working on the real line. But we were interested in the, in the vibrating string. We were interested in what happens to the wave equation on the interval 0 to L when you tack down the two ends. This is what happens with a guitar string or a piano string. Well, it turns out that you still have traveling waves. You can still write your function as a right-moving, a forward-moving traveling wave plus a backwards-moving traveling wave. But because we have boundary conditions, those boundary conditions constrain what h1 and h2 have to look like. So first of all, the value at x equals 0 has to be 0 for all time. Well, that means h1 of, min of 0 minus vt plus h2 of 0 plus vt has to be 0. So that tells us that h2 is related to h1, that h2 of a number, let's say s equals vt, has to be minus h1 of minus s. So they're not two separate functions. If you know what h1 is, you know what h2 is. And then we look at what's happening at L. That's h1 of L minus vt plus h2 of L plus vt. And now we use this fact to change this into an h1. And we see that 0 is h1 of L minus vt minus h1 of minus L minus vt. This number and this number differ by 2L. And what that means is that H1 has to be a periodic function with period 2L. In other words, you can still write the solution to, uh, to the vibrating st string as a sum of traveling waves. The only thing is that you have to use a function with period 2L and the thing that the backwards traveling wave is the mirror image of the forward traveling wave. And I mean mirror image in a fairly literal sense. What's happening is you have the interval from 0 to L. If you had a wave here and it traveled for a while, eventually it would hit the boundary and it would bounce. And then you'd get a wave going back the other way and eventually it would hit this boundary and it would bounce. So after going a distance L to the right and a distance L to the left, it repeats. So every 2L, it repeats. And what happens going to the left is related to what happens going to the right because whatever there is going to the left is going to reflect and become what's going to the right. And whatever is going to the right is going to reflect and become what's going to the left.